second Thursday of next month, which is an actual day. Not my typical made up one that I usually put there. As you can see, syndicated pipe club time once again. And if this is work, you will actually see. And when I move like this, you will see Grogu. Because the virtual thing is trying to let him peek in. It's just, there's dimensions popping in all over the place. That's right. The fabric of, uh, it's like uh, on Halloween, they say that's when like the lines between uh, uh, our world and the other world are uh, the thinnest. And uh, this is uh, a visual representation of that. Yeah, I had no idea that uh, Grogu was part of the spirit realm, but mm -hmm. eh, it works. Kind of looks like a goblin. Cute goblin, but... It's a good thing Zach doesn't listen to this show. <laughs> So, if you are seeing what we're talking about, you've noticed that we've come back to video, and that is because I upgraded my system to Windows 11, and somehow it fixed all the audio syncing issues I'd been having for months. So, we can do talking head videos, and Zoom has this great overlay that makes it kind of look like Greg and I are in the same place, unless, you know, I do something like this, and move my hand over here, to the point where I would actually be, you know, touching his head and my arm disappeared into the fire. Yeah, it does a pretty good job. It's kind of like uh, somebody trying to color in uh, in like a picture, but they don't want to get uh, too close to uh, the edges. And so they leave like little uh, just gaps all around. <laughs> and you know what's even funnier? It's not going to look like that to the people who, who are watching right now. I forgot to switch the frame. So ah. it looks like me and you, with this background, with an overlay on top of it that was my old set behind me from the mm -hmm. Maple City Pipecast days. So let's just fix that. There. Now this is what you're supposed to be seeing, everybody. There we go. It's a good thing I glanced over. We could have done the whole video like that, and people have just been laughing at me, going, hey, you're supposed to be a tech guy. Look at you. And to them, I would have said, kudos, you're absolutely right. I was stupid. <laughs> so, what are you smoking tonight, Greg? Tonight, I am smoking um, Sam Gowith's... Uh no, not Sam Gowith. Uh, uh, it, yeah, it's either Sam Gowith or Gowith and Hogarth's uh, uh, Kendall Cream Flake. I think probably uh, uh, Gowith and Hogarth. Uh, and this is in my uh, Joby Billiard, which is uh, the first pipe that I've ever purchased solely to uh, for a certain type of tobacco. Uh, it's um, my one of my two uh, Lakeland blend uh, pipes. Mm. And me tonight, I am smoking Captain Black uh, Black Sea pipe tobacco. It was one of the. It's one of their premium editions that they don't make anymore. Apparently, it was just not selling enough, and you know I can't blame them. But I was disappointed to see it go. It's pretty good tobacco. That's too bad. That's all right. I've got two. Two other unopened tins of that sitting uh, behind camera, so I'll be all right for a while. Yeah. And in it, I'm smoking it in my my this pipe that's you sent me the Royal Crown, I think. Uh, Royal Guard. Guard. Oh uh, hell, yeah. it looks like it could be either a C or a G because you know I didn't. Yeah. I didn't fix this part of it, so. The Royal Guard, the Stanwell Second. It's a great pipe. I appreciate that trade. Yeah, no, I uh, uh, I think we did very well. I'm very happy with my uh, uh, Brigham pipe, and I'm really glad that you're really happy with that one. And it, it's a great one, too. I love the, it, like, it's a great shape, too. Yeah, it, it fits well in the hand, you know. It's not a hard clencher. And for somebody with half his teeth missing and using falsies on top, that's... 
That's a real, uh, a real benefit. I can't clench too many pipes. Okay. So, Avatar. We still haven't watched it. I mean, I haven't watched it. Here we are talking about talking about Avatar again. Yeah, but you know, like you, you know, you're familiar enough with it. That I think we could probably just go ahead and knock it out. Yeah, I uh, think we're gonna do that. Um, we honestly both once once Greg told me what episode it was, then I remembered what episode it is. I agree. It, this episode doesn't deserve much time. Not really. It's which, one of those episodes that is rare when you're talking Avatar. Yeah, I, you know, we were talking about it a bit off air, but uh, I really feel like this was an episode that uh, should have been rearranged because it's, I, I feel like there, there's like a, it's a bit conflicted because this is an episode where, uh, and uh, if, do you know the, title of the episode uh do you think you uh you might, uh, if you can google that or, or or something um essentially uh the the gang finds uh somebody from uh the water tribe that's living in this uh that that was hurt and left behind so that he could recover uh, at the seaside town which i think is in the earth kingdom and uh that's known for their uh perfumes and oils and they uh and so Katara and Sokka find out that they can uh, there's a chance that they can uh, go with this guy and uh return to their dad and help him with his battle against the fire nation which bums Aang out because he doesn't want to lose his friends which you know like i don't blame Aang for those feelings and those fears but and I, I get that he's still a child and kind of learning but in a way it kind of feels I mean, he has these moments of selfishness uh, throughout the at least throughout this uh, first season like when he's trying to impress uh, all the girls in uh, one of the towns in one of the early episodes um, and, you know, he just makes uh, some wrong choices. And in, in a way, like, and you see this stuff happen, and it's just uh, really frustrating because he, he goes and finds a message that uh, the family friend was waiting for from their dad. And he essentially pockets it and hides it and, because he doesn't want to lose his friends. And then they go through a... Uh, uh, so a uh, kind of like trial for Sokka uh, and it's a water tribe kind of like ordeal where uh, it, it essentially makes uh, you know boys into men uh, it's their like uh, you know the manhood ritual kind of thing and that involves guiding a ship through a bunch of rocks and they do that and they work together as a team but then afterwards, they discover that Aang, uh, the Aang's note, and uh, 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 that he was hiding from their dad, and it causes them to decide, hey, you know, we're gonna, yeah, we're definitely splitting now. Uh, you know, see you later, and uh, and it forces Aang to to have to rescue them because, you know, once again. Uh, Zuko's on their tr uh, trail, and he has a new ally that uh, use it, has a that's basically like a hunter with a uh, kind of like a lizard mount that has a poison tongue that paralyzes whatever it uh, touches, and of course you know takes down uh, Sokka, Katara, and uh, the guy, and you know it's uh, it's a fine episode, like, but the thing is, like, I, and I get the reason why they had Aang redeem himself, and I think that's fine, but 
ultimately, like thematically, I felt like it was a much better story uh, for Sokka and uh, something that was important to him. And like you weigh the different uh, lessons and the values that are in this episode. And I feel like, you know, Aang has so many different stories that he's had already that uh, it would have been nice to give Sokka this and have him kind of be the, the star of this episode. But uh, uh, it wasn't to be. And, uh, but uh, I, I really liked everything that happened with Sokka. Uh, I thought that, uh, you know, considering he's usually the comic relief, uh, this was a, a great way to kind of give him you know, a serious moment and something that was really uh, good color character development, but it was all kind of taken away from the frustrations with Aang being childish. Yes, indeed. He was definitely childish. I'm still looking for the title. Right, right. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and I get it, like, he's still a kid. Now, hopefully, the app works better than the website did on my phone. As normally, I can make the website work, but today it was being a pain in the butt. So mm -hmm. I was downloading the app while you were talking. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. It's after the winter solstice, after the water bending scroll. Ah, here we go, Batu of the Water Tribe. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's the name of the episode. Um, for me, I feel like you could they should have saved Saka's uh, thing for the ending uh, of uh, of the episode. You know, you could tell the Aang story, you know, but have it more in the beginning and like middle, but then and maybe near the end of it, but end it on Saka completing the the thing and having everyone work together through, um, you know, navigating the ship through the rocks as a test of trust and have that be a kind of a way to peel the bad blood that uh, had happened during the episode. Yeah, actually that would have probably made the episode play out a lot smoother and there would have been a reason for everything to happen the way it did. Um, you know, you don't have to change much, just necessarily just change the order of the way yeah. the episode came out, and it'll be fine. You could leave the stuff with the firebenders alone, because that still works really well, and uh, yeah, it'll be fine if they just, you know, change the order of the episode, just a little in bit. Fact, in fact, you could even have the, the part where they get uh, Asaka and Katara, you know, get taken out by... Uh, um, by that uh, that hunter, you could have had uh, had it so Aang left, and then they were going to do the test the first time, and uh, it gets interrupted by Zuko, and uh, and a way it's a, a way to kind of show that uh, uh, you know do you could do it again and show that uh, you know have the healing with with the trust and everything, but also show that it it's better with uh, the three of them together rather than yeah. just uh, without, without them. No, and, yeah, and, you totally know, agree. it really establishes that uh, um, loyalty between each other. I agree. That episode would have been so much better just if they would have just changed the order just slightly. You still would have had Goofy Ang being goofy and doing stupid things because he's 12. And making mistakes. But it would have played out so much better. And it would have gave, like you said, it would give Sokka the episode that he deserved. In yes. this particular case. Because this should have been a totally Sokka-centric episode given what they were doing. And it was Water Tribe based. Yes.
Well, that being yeah. said, we have covered the episode as far as I know. Yes. Yeah. No, and that really is all that needs to be said about it. Uh, you know, not much for, for Zuko, really. He's just mainly used as the antagonist for this. Um, although I did enjoy, uh, I think uh, there was a moment where the, the grandfather pretended to be uh, peril, uh, their, uh, Uncle Iro, uh, Iro uh, pretends to be paralyzed or something. And, uh, <laughs> and yes, that does uh, happen. Yeah. Uh, something between her, him and the um, hunter that uh, I remember was genuinely really funny. Yeah, he was just being a creepy old man. Right, the <laughs> which uh makes you wonder whether they'd be able to get away with that now. No, not at all. I think if they when they remake the live action on 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 Prime or Netflix or whatever they're doing, that scene will not be in there. Mm-hmm. Cuz everything is going to be just too politically correct. Right, right. And if they do what they what you said they're going to do, it definitely won't be in there because no high school principal or whatever Iroh would be mm-hmm. would be able to get away with that. Uh, yeah, we will, we will see how that turns out. So, you've been, you've been watching anything or has Milo been keeping you too busy to, to actually watch anything? Uh, well, on Amazon Prime, uh, they have a really cool documentary about uh, the art in Dungeons and & Dragons, and uh, I watched that and, uh, and really enjoyed it, uh, just because uh, uh, it, it's interesting to see how it went from uh, being kind of like a, a local product that they use, like, people from the high school to uh do the illustrations and took like basically stole <laughs> or, or like traced over like uh scenes from Doctor Strange and uh Nick Fury uh for some for some of the um action stuff in the books to getting like these high caliber uh artists and uh it, like definitely the the earlier artwork has like this uh not campiness but it has a certain style to it that i uh i really liked and uh i felt that it, it kind of went uh it, it was kind of a bit missing from when they you know got the better but kind of a little bit more generic art you know not that it was uh i mean it's all like amazing stuff but there was just something kind of unique to it, that uh, like a, a charm to it that I really liked. Yeah. Oh. But that's but that's essentially all I've uh, kind of been watching, uh, other than uh, kid stuff. And just to give everybody an idea of what we're talking about, I'm just going to throw up uh, a PDF of the cover of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, because this is what the modern art looks like. And I don't have an example, I th- don't think, of the classic stuff kicking around. Uh, if you can look it up uh, really quick, uh, do Advanced Dungeons & Dragons uh, Player's Handbook or something. Uh, E,
And, you know, there's this. Let's see if it's actually on screen. Oh, good, it did. The, the split screen thing worked. I'm still getting used to Windows 11. Yeah. But yeah, now this is the this is the one E right here beside us. It still looks pretty good. I mean, that's pretty good drawing for uh, when you when you compare it to. Uh, well, here's the, the original. Uh, here's the monster manual for uh, the current edition, the five E. Sure, it's high def and whatnot, but you go back to to this and it's still pretty good i mean oh yeah is that the one with the red idol or something on it or like the uh no you can't see it this is the monster this is actually the monster manual for advanced for D D one e the advanced dungeons gotcha. and dragons so comparing it to the monster manual current the current monster manual was uh and on the money so yeah it looks way more realistic but mm -hmm. still, both both styles of art have their have their place. Yeah, no, like uh, the original, like that artwork. Uh, even though I can't see it right now, I, I've seen enough of the style there. It kind of reminds you of something that you would see on a paperback from that uh, time period uh, in the fantasy or sci-fi section. Yeah, actually, it would. It does look like that. But, uh, yeah, uh, me, I haven't been really doing too much TV watching. Um, been getting into CSI Vegas, the reboot of CSI. Hmm. Only because Gil Grissom's back, and then he was the only thing that would made CSI worth watching to me, so I'm watching the reboot. That's cool. Or reboot. Boot. Someone's going to comment saying I said a boot. <laughs> Although, I was watching a YouTube video uh, from a Canadian on the West Coast, mm -hmm. and I heard it. And I, I mean, it was there, totally there. I'm sitting going, I don't say those words like that. <laughs> Well, I mean, I uh, it wouldn't bother me just because I, well, I like uh, all the all the accents and everything. So uh, to me, it just gives a uh, uh, you know color to everything. Yeah, it's and, just one of those things I got tired of hearing. Oh, for sure. Um, and like I know, like it for me, it you know you you talk and like it it doesn't occur to you that like you have some sort of accent like because you know when you're growing up you think oh like i talk normal everyone else has has the accent so i know i have this uh midwestern uh accent i i, I suppose mm -hmm. i don't hear it well um well it's true that it's kind of like more I mean, there might be so, like a little bit of Chicago ness to it. Possibly. Yeah, 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 yeah. The way you held that, eh? Yeah. And, and I, I know one thing. I, I get. Uh, uh, I remember kind of getting uh, not picked on, but uh, uh, talking about with a, a friend of mine uh, was uh, like I call um, eggs eggs with more of like an a rather than an e. Uh, so like, uh, I, I think that it might be a, like a Chicago thing. Of course, you're talking to the guy who, while I was in the deep South, didn't hear the accents. But mm -hmm. when I was talking to the agents, I was training on the phones. When I got back to, to the home office, I was from, then I could hear it. Yeah. I don't know. They all sounded normal to me when I was there. And then I, I talked to one of them on the phone going, you didn't sound like that in person. Right. I didn't say it, but I certainly thought it. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a, there's definitely distinctive regional styles like uh, Boston, New York have their own style. Uh, 
you know, the South. And even in the South, you have a lot of different uh, kind of dialects a, a bit. Yeah, yeah. And uh, here's here's the thing. I was in, when I was down in Louisiana, I was in Lafayette. And I didn't hear any remarkable difference the way um, I was speaking to the way they were speaking. But like I said, when I heard them on the phone, it, I did. But let's just go into the pipe world for a moment. A um, couple of uh, people I've talked to and listened to on a semi-regular basis uh, from the YTPC, Padre Piper and Mark VV or the Briar Bothy, depending on how he wants to be known recently. Um, I don't hear them speaking with much of an accent either. So, you know, I, I'm not, I guess I'm just not the best at picking up accents or yeah. I'm just so prejudiced. Everybody sounds like me. Hmm. There's definitely a nuance to it. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, it's not quite like uh, the UK where like it's uh, like every place has like a really distinct uh, like, like going from city to city has its own really distinct kind of dialect. Well, I mean, you put somebody from Australia and somebody from the UK, say Britain, they sound pretty close to me, except when they're, you know, saying certain words. But just general conversation, I wouldn't know. I only use that because I've been watching a lot of hermit craft recently. Yeah. And and one of the hermits is from Australia. And, you know, you got a couple of them, a few, quite a few of them that are from the UK. And they've grouped together. Three of them. And once you get to the Americans, I can tell the difference between the other three and the Americans. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, I couldn't tell you where Good Times with Scar or Impulse are from, uh, from based on how they speak. Right. They sound American to me. Which to me sounds Canadian. So I am not a linguist. Right. How do we get a language anyway? Yeah, it would be interesting to to be in that field of study. Um, I know um, uh, it's just random bit of trivia that I know. Um, there's like an island off of, uh, uh, the, I think it's the coast of uh, North Carolina. And it's so, uh, because the community lives far enough away from the land that um their dialect has kind of remained the same since like the 1700s or 1800s. And so it's like a, a very kind of like antiquated. Um, but because now there's a more people kind of like leaving the island and, you know, not coming back and everything, it's uh, kind of dying out. Hmm. That's a shame. It's always a shame when something unique dies. Mm -hmm. Oh, but anyway, I think we have enough for this week. I think okay. I've put my foot in my mouth a few times too many, and I'm going to call it here. So anyway, if you do want to follow us throughout the week, you can always find me on Twitter, Instagram, all the places. I have the link tree link that will be in the, in the description down below. Greg, where, where, where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at the Badger Piper. Um, you can follow my Twitter if you want, but uh, it's mainly just uh, where I kind of save my venting for the most part. Uh, but it's the underscore Badger Piper. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. You can always email the show at reverseflashtime at gmail.com. Although I am really going to think I'm going to stop saying that soon because nobody ever does. And the show, of course, is on Twitter at uh, 
syndic syndicated pipe. You can follow that and see when episodes release because it's pretty much all that gets up there. And, of course, YouTube, where you are probably watching this video. Right. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit like, leave a comment if you want, uh, and uh, leave a review on uh, iTunes. Five star preferably because they are the ones that will get us noticed. Yes. And if it's one star, remember to just mail that to Apple. Yeah. That's the official way to send it. One star reviews, they get officially mailed to the one star review department at Apple. Dot America. Yes. All right. And they're, uh, it's uh, their Bermuda Triangle office. With that being said, we wish you good smokes, great entertainment, and we will see you in the next one. Talk to you later.